the familiar warmth of the forge. If they were to reach the top of Mount Morta, their equipment would need to be of the highest quality. faded from the sky, the most were fast asleep. Mary would write about her family, immortalizing them for future generations.
pilgrims, once lost in cavern mazes, were now trapped. Their poor families forever looking forward to a return that will never happen. The halls of Anea Dyer, so mesmerizing in their magnificence, were to be found at the end of a long road. And a hero never knows what is waiting them at the end of a road. Moving is more important than reaching.
Kevin's need to help all began when his elder brother Mark left the house. His brother was strong, making any near him feel safe. But he left Kevin. Though Uncle Ben knew what his nephew needed, a focal point for his aspirations. mother away from her child would cause worry even in the best of times. This was far from the best of times. It had been more than a year since Mark, Mary's eldest son, had gone to live in the monastery deep in the forest. The same forest was now the source of such worrying news. over a map he received from a refugee. The silk caverns were a twisted maze of dead ends and venomous nests. But somewhere along the right path, Anea Dyer, spirit of the Caldipo Caves, rested.
Love, truly a divine emotion, especially during dark days. Love had motivated this mother to lay down her life for her cub. try and rouse her from eternal slumber, and it would be love welcoming the new orphan among the Bergsons. thing could have dragged grandmother this far. The will of Rhea will flow in those still obelisks to aid the guardians. This was the only thing Margaret silently whispered. And the Bergson had to return home in order to understand what had occurred.
A set of daggers made just for him. They would be his guide to finding himself, his focal point. The boy tested them. They felt good, not too heavy, not too light, like an extension of himself. Uncle Ben suggested a few practice swings outside. The daggers sliced the air, guided with an easy grace. His nephew was clearly a natural with the blades and would be ready to join his father and sister in no time. But the boy's mother had words on that subject. Two of her children were already risking their lives and she would not have her precious little boy out there as well. Regretfully, he took the daggers away. Who was he to argue with a mother when it involved her child? Handing over the daggers was like abandoning a part of himself. He was meant for them. Meant to be out there fighting for what was right. He just needed to convince them. Although in the safety of the Bergson's house, the young cub was not yet free from danger. Exhaustion racked the animal's body, its chest heaving for even the smallest of breaths. The family believed several plants found deep in the nearby caves, combined together, could serve to remedy the situation.